In this video, we're going to continue our work with differentiation and look at some basic questions on determining the nature of stationary points. Let's consider the three scenarios that we've seen in previous videos. We could have a maximum, we could have a minimum, or we could have a point of inflection. What I'm going to do is a quick sketch of each and we will look at the key features. A nice graph to show a maximum would be a negative quadratic. So our parabola would open up downwards and we'd have something that looks like that. This right here now is where dy by dx, the gradient function, gives us a value of zero. If you like, the tangent to the curve at this x-coordinate is parallel to the x-axis. To the left of the stationary point, we have an increase in function. So dy by dx for all values in this interval will be greater than zero. If we now consider to the right of the stationary point, we have a negative gradient. So for all x coordinates in this particular interval, dy by dx will be less than zero. We call this a maximum. So that's a maximum. If we now consider a minimum, a positive quadratic will show this quite nicely. We have now, and I use the function notation, f dashed of x equal to zero at this point. So if we look now at the gradient of the tangent to the curve at this x-coordinate, it would now be zero. We can see that's parallel to the x-axis. We have a decrease in function to the left of the stationary point. We have now the stationary point, and then we have now an increase in function to the right. We can say the derivative of the gradient function when evaluated for all x-coordinates here will be less than zero, we will have now f dashed of x greater than zero for all x coordinates to the right of that stationary point. Let's now look at the point of inflection as we saw in the previous video. We have y is x equal to x cubed as a nice example. So this is a point of inflection. We have now dy by dx equal to zero. We then have a positive gradient to the left. We have our zero gradient and then a positive gradient to the right. So when we have a point of inflection, the sign is going to be the same either side of that stationary point. Okay, we looked at two different methods to find the nature of the stationary point or determine the nature. The first way was the manual way. We found the x coordinate of the stationary point. So let's say x was equal to 1. We considered now a value close to 1 to the left, so we could say x is equal to 0 0.9, and then now 1 the other side, so we could say x is equal to 1.1. We would do now the f of 0 0.9, we would do, sorry, f dashed of 0 0.9 and f dashed of 1.1. We would see that this now would give us a positive quantity, this would give us a negative quantity, therefore it would be seen as a maximum. When we did this one, we would now take a point. So let's say that this x is going to be equal to 2. We could evaluate the gradient at 1.9. We could evaluate the gradient at 2.1. We would see that this would give us a negative. This would give us a positive, And we could deduce that that was going to be a minimum point. If we looked now at this particular example, we would do now the f, and this is the, the uh, stationary point, we would do f of negative, so f dashed of negative 0 0.1, and that would give us a positive value, and then f dashed of 0 0.1, and we would end up with a positive value. Again, if that was a negative x cubed, we'd have negative and negative. So this was the manual way. The alternative was to take the second derivative. So in this particular case, we could say that d2y by dx squared for a maximum was less than zero, and this gave us the max. If we looked at a minimum, I'm going to say f double dashed of x, which again is the same as d2y by dx squared, is going to be greater than zero, and that gives us the minimum. Then we had now the scenario where we had a point of inflection. We saw that d2y by dx squared, if this gave us zero, we had two choices. We could take the third derivative, d3y by dx cubed, and if this wasn't equal to zero, we had a point of inflection, or we could go ahead and evaluate now either side of the stationary point. 
So that's a brief recap of what we looked at. We're now going to go ahead and simply apply that to a couple of